<laughs> oh, Lord. So, so that's hey. south of France. Okay. Oh, no, Zane, you go. Um, yeah, let's hi. look at the location. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, no locations because of paparazzi. No, uh, I'm, no, no. Yeah, I'm teasing you. I'm teasing you. Um, well, it's, it's amazing to be here with you guys. The last time I saw you, the world was very different, right? And we were talking about things that we could never have imagined we would be here today. And mm. this is the first time we're catching up since the last time we met uh, at Soho House in, in England. And, and wow, you know, I'm dying to know how you guys have been doing and what you've been thinking mm -hmm. and feeling and readjusting to all of this. Yummy? I, 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 mm. forget, I forget, Zane, that you're uh, the TV woman. I'm like, wow, yeah. how are you doing that so well? <laughs> well how did my you adopt open? that so live? <laughs> Yeah, and we're live. <laughs> okay. In three, two, one. So, okay, let's go. But uh, anyway, ladies, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us um, tonight. I feel incredibly pleased to be here. Um, well, first, first things first, that we're all together and we can have a conversation that seems like the world is having today, even though about six, three, four, five months ago, almost everything everyone is talking about were things we talked about and thought, wow, this is definitely the way to go. This can no longer work. The systems need to, you know, be broken, pieced together. And fast forward like four or five months, all of these things are flying around. And um, yes. I just thought, wow, it's time to recalibrate that conversation in terms of maybe yes. where are we now? You're all building businesses across the world that are making, that, that's making impact in a, in a groundbreaking way, you know, and contributing significantly to shaping the story today. Uh, Roseanne, I'm not saying narrative. I almost put a jar here for every time, <laughs> for every time someone says narrative or inclusivity or diversity or any of those words. So no, yeah. that word is not popping up today, you know. No. And um, I just thought, you know what? Let's just pick up from where we left, where we left off. And of course, there's some things that we thought we should do that we, we've not gotten around to. So hopefully if we put it out there in the universe, we won't have a choice but to, you know, but to go in and talk about it. So um, sitting down with you, Zane, and you, you telling me about Ralph, for example, you know, and all the work that you did that was phenomenal. That was last year. Oh, no, year before? 2019? Last year. Yeah, it was last, last year. Yeah, yeah, it was mm -hmm. uh, it was last year. And um, when I met you guys, I was on a high because I had done a, a really amazing event that was successful and exciting uh, in in Morocco. And I was I, I began to see the possibility that I could have money again after CNN. <laughs> you know, I thought that this is a great business model. All these people are now coming to me for live events and for curating gatherings, as, as you guys, you know, well know. Uh, and I was really excited and I thought, wow, you know, I've, I've nailed it now. The business model is really clear, global live events and gatherings. And so I made all these deals since, I, since we last met. And I was, you know, feeling pretty good about myself. <laughs> you know? uh, and then January rolled around right after I, I signed all these contracts. And I'm like, yeah, 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 force majeure, whatever. Yeah, force majeure, whatever. You know, what, what really will be a force, force majeure? And uh, in January, every single thing was canceled that I had spent, uh, you know, about two years building. And everything yeah. collapsed around me. And I'm sure you guys have uh, similar life-changing scenarios. And I just watched everything yes. crumble. And I looked at it and I smiled because, you know, this has happened to me many times where I think I've got it. And then I tell, I'm like, okay, God, okay, now what? Now what do I do, right? Mm. So it's, uh, yeah, so, so it's, mm. been, it's been eye-opening. It's been challenging. Um, it's mm. been, uh, you know, I've, I've had to play mental jujitsu with myself. Uh, just to stay, yeah. you know, mentally focused. And I'm sure Leah and, and Roseanne have, have similar stories. Similar stories. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, I think, well, the last time we saw each other, first of all, it was at a, at a live event of gathering with everyone. And we had the most amazing time. And it was a time of, first of all, we all met, which was kind of amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I met you all. I didn't know any one of you. 
Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And and we all connected yeah. and had amazing dinners together. And we, you know, immediately, obviously, we we connected, you know, and and talked very quickly, deeply about important things. And we went there, you know, which was also always so so nice. And uh, yeah, it was at the, the fashion thing, and it's so funny. It feels so long ago today. Um, a whole other lifetime. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know when we can go back to that again, which is very strange to think about. Yeah, um, yeah, it is. Probably so, gone. but then even all the things that we talked about, I feel like right now, when you think about it, so you have to rethink everything again because all over again, changed. everything yes. has changed, right? Mm. And um, like, so yeah, so I think at least for me, the confinement has been a very interesting time to like, I've, I mean, I've seen all colors, you know, mm. I've mm. gone up, down, up, down, in the middle, in the middle, up, down, I mean, all of it, you know, and it's yes. been, been quite challenging because it's like a huge shift of, of your whole normal, which was, mm. I mean, insane. And, um, and having business, you know, we have Lam Lam, et cetera. It's very tricky today, you know, having a brand at the moment where everything is closed. So we had to deal a lot with that as well. Um, being a small business, it's, you know, very challenging in times like this. Um, yes. And then the whole fashion kind of stopped pretty much as well, yeah. you know, um, mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. So it's kind of a, you know, it's a very strange time. Um, and in a way, you know, at first when you come into the confinement, you're like, okay, fine. First, you, it's hard, but then you're like, okay, I'm going to come up with a plan. <laughs> You know, I'm gonna create something, and I'm gonna get out of it. I'll maybe like an online course. Perfect. Let's do this. (laughs) Roll out of bed with a master plan. You know, come up with a schedule, and you don't even do anything. You don't, Mm. and the confinement is over, and you realize I didn't come up with anything. (laughs) This is (laughs) (laughs) which is fine. Which which is fine because sometimes you know. When, when you're like in the eye of the storm, the most important thing yeah, is to yes. survive. Like, you know, coming out of it whole, like, you know, more wholesome, like, you know, protecting one's mind, one's state of mind and my peace, you know? So that's, um, that for me is something that's been really crucial this season. How do I protect my mind? How do I protect, you know, my peace? How do I ensure that, listen, you know, from that wholesome place, I'm okay. I can see the world, world around me. So yes, yes, maybe maybe work is not where I want it to be. We last year, it's so interesting because we've not had a proper office for a while, right? So last mm. year, you know, we just thought, hmm, let's go, let's do it. We got a whole building. We're going to gonna... turn into a hub, like, you know, create a hub for fashion creative people in Nigeria. And then mm. it happens. And now you're like, it's just an empty building, which is so odd considering a lot of the people we work with just usually log online. I mean, there's a facility that we manage uh, for apparel manufacturing, which is like a fixed place with about 30, 40 people. But in term, terms of like having like a fixed base it was something we didn't see the need to do for a while because, you know, everyone just connected and got the work done. And for the first time we invested in something and there's, <laughs> there's a pandemic and it's been shut down. And I keep looking at it, looking at money, like, you know, you're like, that's money, babe, every day going, you know. And I, I've been questioning myself, like, that's a dream I've had. It's not happening now. And, you know, there's been yes. you can do it in a different way, but I don't even have the strength to try to rejig it in a different way. Cause I'm just like, yeah. I just look, Sometimes I go in, you know, and just sit down and look around like you're so empty. You didn't have to make this choice last year, but I'm not going to beat myself off about it because I realize that I think in the fullness of time, everything will, you know, will eventually come together again. But maybe it wasn't meant to be the way we thought it should be. And um, yes, and I guess um, it's about just not being too hard on ourselves and just taking it yeah. one day at a one day at a time. And look at you amazing women. Yeah. We have I, family, so much so much more that we're doing beyond beyond work and trying yeah. to juggle all that. Yeah. I think at the same lot. time though, uh yeah I mean I think at the same time this was so so morbidly unexpected. But at the same time, um like you were saying at the beginning there are so many issues that we discussed uh, back in December, um, such as you know the rejigging of fashion and what can we do to build um, f- 
better structures around collaboration and yeah. um, community and you know, you know issues around manufacturing, which was your talk, yeah. and also how can we reprioritize and and build necessary institutions and data collection and whatnot within the fashion industry, not just in Africa but globally. You know, we had really? a lot of questions around the emergency. Um, that the world was facing. Like we, we walked away from our meeting understanding that we were in a crisis, that the world was in a crisis. Um, and we had a lot of building to do. So yes, in one, in one perspective, obviously we didn't expect a virus to come along and scare the living daylights out of our whole existence. <laughs> but at the same time, I think a lot of the discussions that are taking place now in terms of rejig, restructure, new build, new plans, new ideas, abolishment, stopping, all of these things that we discussed are, are now actually happening, but in, a, in an urgent manner, I guess. Um, so I, I don't know, on one end, much like you, Leia, I've been through every single level of emotion um, from the highest highs to the lowest lows to not even knowing how I am. People ask me how I am and I'm like, I really don't know. I don't know. How. <laughs> That's generally been my answer. But at the same time, there's like this undercurrent of, of yeah. genuine excitement for what we can possibly do. And, um, and I think that the beauty in our union at, at BOF last year is that we started talking about this. And I feel that you know, I just hope that the, 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 the conversation continues. We looked at matters related to going beyond. Like, what does it even mean to be African? Remember we talked about that? Like, what does it even mean? What, what is that? What is made in Africa? We need to yeah. explore that. We need to collect data. We need to build on so many different entities. And I think now's a good time to do that. What Once, you know, we get over our emotional, I don't even know what this is. <laughs> Whirlwind, Mama. roller coaster. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. Yeah. I don't know what yeah. this is. I don't know what this is. But my friend, my friend gave a name. She calls it COVID brain. <laughs> it's a good COVID name brain. for it. It's a good name. COVID brain. Yeah. Yeah. She calls it COVID brain, and I think it's true. Well, you know, but, um, um, but we were on to something. How you how you deal with COVID brain is that you must have a quarantini. Uh, for every uh, for every situation, so just, just if that helps you, yeah. <laughs> Jesus, um, I, Lord, I, I do I do think though that uh, the way we think about the future of work, the way we think about how we're restructuring our our goals and our ideas, and you know, as businesswomen, as 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 members of mixed families, um, how how do we do it? I've been grappling with. Where is the opportunity in this? I was mm -hmm. desperate to slow down, you guys. Like when I met you, I was, and I know well, you, you guys definitely too. You slowed were flying down. Here, flying definitely there. Slowed down. I'm like, I called it out, <laughs> and I didn't mean this. I didn't mean this, but I haven't traveled in a while. But I, you know, I'm looking at, okay, everything's going digital. Okay, this is going to be with us yes. for a while. If you look at previous pandemics, you were looking at two years, vaccine to two to five years, wave, wave no wave, infection, reinfection. You know, there is not going to be for a while, in my view, that normal that we crave, uh, but there will be new normals and how we manage our fear, right? How we interact with other people. You know, we're social creatures. So that's what's so hard Correct. about this is like not hugging someone and like having social distancing here at least. Yes. So... I've been looking at, okay, Zane, you know, okay, where are the opportunities, right, in this? So take everything you know and have learned uh, and, and hash it out and think, okay, if things are going digital in, on the continent, where's the need, right? And I've landed on things like e-learning, right? You have 118 million uh, kids out of school in Africa. 10 million have the internet. You know, yes. There's an audience. The others don't. So there's an audience too because there's just lack of connectivity. So is that a space with content, even with fashion and learning? You know, is is that going to be the next, um, you know, the next space to to explore? So mm. I I don't know how you've tried to innovate around this, but I've just I've just kind of landed there professionally. 
Uh, but personally, yes. I think it's it's just a tough fight every day to just figure out how do I uh, survive? How do I how do I make money? How do I build a successful business? And how do I do it in my pajamas at home? <laughs> so, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Actually, so. to your point as well, like I think mm. for me and maybe maybe we all brought this on because I was also like, I really wanted to slow down. I was one of those as well. Yes. I was like, oh my God, this is too much. Same. We have to slow down and slow down. And I went, yeah. I mean, obviously then I really slowed down. I'm like, okay, this is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but, but at the same yes. time, now that you slow down too, you also realize, oh my God, I was on such a pace. That's yeah. so not sustainable in general. Not yeah. healthy. I'm not and healthy. Not healthy. And also like, you know, mm. I think that the, 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 the challenge as well, and I know when we spoke as well as about, you know, in November, we were like, let's do this and we have to do this, we have to do this because, you know, in a way, like, and I think we're all maybe very similar in that, you know, we always want to help. We always want to solve a problem, solve, a, you know, come up with a solution yeah. to a problem that's existing. So we're like, okay, in Africa, there's a lot of problems. We need to solve them, you know, kind of, we're always in that mode, right? right? And yeah. then at the end, but then at some somewhere you're like, you know, I actually also want to slow down also. So, yes. And now that we're in this, for me, one of the things in this confinement that I realized too, is like, you know, I kind of want to really balance my life and slow down and have a proper, like, you know, life that has work in it. And then the rest and not just work being the only thing. And then everything else, you know, you, you do as you go along kind of thing. And so it's been yes. kind of interesting, actually. I feel like for me, you're always caught up and then do I get on the train? because the train you see the train you're like oh i want to get on i want to get on i want to get on and then you're like but do i should i get on or have that moment mm-hmm. of like maybe i should just take a break and actually look at this and take my time and yeah. really you know so it's mm-hmm. been kind of i feel like it's been a lot of that as well for me like trying to because there's a lot of exciting things out there there's a lot you know and yeah. you want to go all the yeah. time and you want to you know, I love being part of stuff. I love being project. I love creating something new. I love, again, solving problems, right? Um, and then you just, sometimes I think you just do too much. And, um, mm-hmm. you know. I couldn't have agree Have you enjoyed more. the balance, kind of, you guys? Have you enjoyed having more balance if you put the fear and the unknown aside? I mean, yeah. the balance piece is like a gift, isn't it? Yeah. Like for yeah. our lives. Definitely. Uh, for and, and Definitely, and, Zane. Definitely. And, so, and like, so, so and like, and welcome. I think... Yeah, we all, we, we did bring this on in a way. Well, I know I did. S- similarly to what Leia said, I was, there was, 2019 in general was so insane work-wise. I, I don't, I, I don't remember um, ever having a moment like a real break. I was either on a plane or in another city or in another hotel room. And um, I didn't realize actually how much it affected me psychologically to sleep in different beds. Just a simple just, just that simple observation, I didn't realize how much it had affected me. So uh, I have personally found this balance brilliant. It's, it's made me understand actually what my priorities are. Um, it's helped me um, develop routines because that just doesn't exist in my life. And I think I think the same um, is, I think, I'm sure that you guys would go through similarly. There's just, I never had a routine. It was kind of very last minute. So I, I think this balance has been great. And I hope that um, that those of us who are constantly working, building, solving, um, really take the time to pause and and understand that the, the blessing in this moment, which we'll probably never see again in our lifetimes. So yeah. for sure, I've I've definitely appreciated and found solace in the balance. Professionally, of course, it's been it's been difficult, and uh, I mean, and on the charitable side as well with the Magic Drive. Obviously, we can't continue with our programs, so we're still trying now to work out how we can do this. And like Zane said, possibly organize online um, gatherings as we're doing right now, and um, and taking things kind of that way but from a grander perspective looking at you know cci generally in the continent it's just you know how it's really a time of rejigging and trying to work out how we can continue this development um i think that we are in a better place 
Um, and I think you'd probably agree, Omo, in the sense that we are still building and still cultivating and still exploring. So I guess this, this uh, it, it's a nudge, but, but it, it, we are cultivating. So I, I, feel like, I feel like we haven't been hit as hard as everywhere else. Wouldn't you say so? Would you think so? I think because uh, we have a more informal economy, right? We have so yes. many jobs. That's not part of a formal. That's not formal, and a lot of people who depend on their on their everyday income for survival. And that's yes. sort of. And we don't coupled with the fact that we don't have a welfare system. Like there's so it's, it 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 even gives me a bit of anxiety because um, at some point here before before the partial lockdown was taken was converted into a curfew. You could actually see the hunger on people's faces. You know, people were ask, beginning to ask questions. You know, do you want to die from COVID or die from hunger? It became oh, you know, of course, bad. of course, the same in Sudan, so, the exact same year, and so I'm sure in Kenya. Um, yeah, so, yeah. So yeah. it's got to go well. riddled with a bit of anxiety and realizing that wow, you know, while the economy might recover eventually what about the lives in between you know poverty people that were especially for for us in nigeria maybe there were hopes of you know that gradually increasing like the minimum uh, income um, income wage you know and then your economy yeah. starts back you know and then you realize that a lot of people are literally depending yeah. on on i can't even minimum doesn't even quite quali qualify or quantify you know, in terms yeah. of where the money is going to come from, where the next meal is going to come from. And, you know, Zane, you were talking about education and school, you know, you, you, you also feel privileged that maybe you have access to internet and your children can do home, um, home support learning cool. programs or this and, you know, just different things. But there's so many children. Does this mean they're not going to school this stuff? You know, right. in a country like Nigeria, where, especially if you think about Northern Nigeria, it, it frightens me that, not only will they miss school for a whole term, some of them might probably never go back to school again because yeah. they'll be discouraged, you know? Yes. Um, they're not, there's no, there won't be any online learning system. Let's, let's face it, you know? So even what are they yeah. going to do? Will that be on radio? I mean, would it be programs on radio or television? Would yeah. that even depend think, on having access to electricity? Yeah. Yeah. So many levels of things that we can't even begin to talk about so that yeah. when I sit here and think about Oh, how I feel and all, and I think about what's going on beyond me, beyond the story that we see every day. It's yeah, I don't know. It's like it's, I know, it's but, a lot. You know yes. what, but you know what's interesting too is like, I mean, you know, when we think of Africa, we think about, of course, there's no electricity, there's poverty, there's all these problems, there's no welfare, etc., etc. Cetera, et cetera. We know that, right? But then, what what this pandemic has done is show us that in the West we have this problem too. Yes. And I think that was oh, yeah. the most yeah. shocking part of it as well is like, wow, in America, right? Or even in Europe, et cetera, in terms of like kids who are not having access to homeschooling because that they actually so don't have true, a computer yeah. at home. And so most of those kids are not even getting that education. And you're like, right. but wait a minute, we're in the West. I thought they had fixed all these problems and they have yeah, so, Yes, you're so And you're like, oh, no, no one has insurance. And they won't even cover your testing, or if they do cover your nope. they'll cover the testing, but they won't cover the treatments, etc. And we don't have the hospitals, and people are, and you're like, wait, this is America, though, right? Yeah, you know, the same in England, country. same in England, you, or yeah, or Europe, yeah. or so, whatever. I mean, you're so right, <laughs> which is so mind-boggling. And you're it's like, very true. The whole world is has so many problems we haven't actually figured out and fixed, which is strange. Like this. I don't know. I feel like the world, we haven't built yeah. a world that enriches everyone, you know, which is so strange, actually. Like the idea Absolutely. that even now I'm like, and, and, the, and the other strange. irony, I'm sad. But, but also like Listen. now, when you think about all this debt, we're in, you know, like we're acquiring and I'm trying to understand like, wait, there's all this debt. And then, you know, America will be like, oh, I'm put, we're putting in billions for small businesses, billions for this and billions for that. And I'm like, if we always had this money, we can just pull. I'm sorry, but why do we have poverty? Yeah. Why are people not eating? Why, why, like, why couldn't, why didn't we That's do this to actually solve problems for all? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's so strange. Like, I don't understand it actually. Like, what kind I of think, a world yeah. do we have? 
Um, yeah. Well, and, and the the added irony to that is that actually African countries have been responding to COVID a lot better than ever expected. Like what Senegal are doing with the one dollar testing kits and and testing everybody and and curbing. Um, what's the word? Is it curbing the cases or flattening the curve or whatever that term terminology is? But Senegal have been doing very well. Madagascar are doing brilliantly. Ethiopia's health minister, who's a woman, has also responded yes, to it. a woman, and her name, I think, is Leah. It's Leah. Something. Yes. As well. Oh. They, always, they always make a mistake, and they're like, Leah Kabeda said, there are no definitive. I'm like, I don't know how to say that. Like, I don't know. You should say yes. 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 No clue. What are you yeah. going to ask me? Supermodel and health minister. Yes. Uh, all, all, all. <laughs> all together. <laughs> But yeah, she's done a brilliant job. She's done a brilliant job. So I think I think you're so right, Leah. This this virus has revealed so much. All the holes of, everywhere. Yeah, I have massively. to say that that for Africa, for for the world in general, including our continent, it's revealed uh, the the deplorable state of our health systems globally. Right. Yes. The lack of investment, Correct. the lack of distribution, the lack of access to health care. Uh, you know, you know, where where we've always gone abroad for treatment rather than beef up our own systems yeah. uh, on the in our yeah. own countries, right? Yeah. So the heads of state will be like, "I'm off to London, I'm off to Singapore, I'm yeah. I'm off to South Africa, you know, or yeah. elsewhere, Thailand." Yeah. So mm-hmm. I think that's one thing. But the thing that really uh, is upsetting me uh, when it comes to looking at the continent in its entirety is that actually for the last ten years we've been doing quite well. We have, our GDPs have been growing. The seven of the 10 fastest growing economies in the world have been in Africa. Our economic policy has been good. Our economic policy has been sound. We've attracted investment, right? And so now in a situation that is actually not of Africa's doing, and it's the foreign sort of element that has triggered many clusters of COVID. So like the Italians and coming into the continent and, you know, whoever, the French in North Africa, right? And so now, um, even though we had these these great um, uh, macroeconomic policies, uh, the world is, we are so dependent uh, globally as well as with Africa on trade. And yeah. for and um, you know commodities like look at Nigeria and the toilet the budget and the money is in the toilet because of the uh, I mean, because of oil prices commodity prices have killed you right same with Angola Kenya can't export its main export horticulture and uh, what's the other thing tea and coffee so people yeah. can't sh- trade borders are shutting right and then we import Africa imports food so now that exacerbates Africa the imports security. everything. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's not like there's not food in the world, like, you know, the World Food Organization has said, it's that we can't get it to the places that we need. Mm-hmm. And so we are yes. going to suffer badly. You know, remittances are down. Unemployment is like 43% or something now. Um, the informal sector people, we don't even know where they are, right? Like, mm-hmm. like you know, like you're selling flowers or tomatoes on the street and now you're gone. So how do we know where to find you to give you some mobile money to, how do you locate people, right? And so that's mm-hmm. some of the thinking that's going on on the continent is how do we find these people that aren't registered anywhere, right? How, I, yeah. they, we can find them on tel- mobile phones. So how do we how do we do that? So I feel upset that we've, we've done so well and the perception for, in the world will again be, because we're asking for a $150 billion debt stamp bill. Oh, there's yeah. Africa. Yeah. You know, look at those riots. You know, asking those Africans, again. It's like the mm-hmm. Ethiopia drought in the 80s scenario. And that's not actually... That's not the case. And so I feel like yeah. we should be, you know, very vocal about this particular point as uh, creatives and, and people who very uh, can it's... understand. Yeah. But, yeah. But well, that's we exactly that's where we well. come in. Definitely. That's remember where we come in. Remember how we were saying as well how disconnected we were all on the continent as well. Remember, we're talking about yeah. those the things actually that we discussed because we're all from different parts of Africa. Um, right. But like, I have no idea what goes on in Nigeria. You don't know what happens in Ethiopia. No one knows what's happening in Tanzania. Like everyone, like it's, we're so, in a way, like, yeah. you know, we, everyone is in their own little thing, which is kind of a shame because I yes. think there's so much richness. And that's what we're saying at the time. There, was, there would be so much richness in actually sharing and coming together and doing things together and yes. and, and creating, creating our own, um, our own, uh, 
yeah. uh, uh, you know, customer. Yeah, but yeah. like even as we're, as we're doing us, right now, us, by we're... us type of situation, you know, like mm-hmm. by us for mm-hmm. us or whatever you want to call it, but like just creating a some kind of a virtual cycle there between the African continent between between the African countries and and feeding each other, you know, like one has yes. something, the other one doesn't, and you sw- you know you swap that for the other thing that he has, etc. Having that kind of you know, yeah. I mean, I know it's crazy to th- maybe it's too much of a dream because we can b- no, even it's, ethnic it's, it's, groups in between a country it's are like killing each other all the time, which yeah. is very sad. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't can... think. I think it's more of a reality than anything because, because you know, while there's a withdraw, each country is kind of withdrawing to itself and its own self reliance, and we need PPEs and masks and all that. No one is yes. going to be safe. If people are infected and crossing borders and all that so so i think there is this this health working together that needs to exist and from an economic standpoint right uh the regions have always traded well with one another right we have yes. we, have, we you know so i do think like the free the free trade area agreement to africa that's been pushed is potentially an opportunity for us to figure out look i can get my masks from ethiopia now you know the PPEs from you know. Oh, uh, I can stop the fabric. Where, Are what you creating fabric masks? Yeah, you stop the fabric. Yeah. Is it? Mm. Yeah, or I'm just making up. Like Lem 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 can stop producing, you know, these masks, or or we can get the, you know, or or Nigeria. I don't know what Sudan. But is but, but is uh, it that? But is it that <laughs> open? <laughs> I don't now, know if it's open like that though. I'm gonna need a whole other show for that. <laughs> Wait, I don't, a whole other panel. <laughs> I don't think it's open like that though. Yeah, or, What's not, not right now? Yeah. It's not. The, like not right I now, don't think that the countries are sharing each, you know, sending each other masks and selling. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I don't think that's yeah, actually yeah. happening. Is you it? know, you no, know, Leia. Right uh, Leia, with on your point of of how open we are with each other. Um, obviously, I'm not an expert when it comes to trade, but I, what I will tell you is that um, the former vice president of Sudan, and this is, you know, speaking of what's happening here, he he was he was killed. He died in a in a plane crash. But one of his dreams was to link African countries through transport. Um, he wanted to build roads, and he also wanted to tackle the aviation issue that we have on the continent, and that's the fact. For example, if I wanted to go to, let's say, from Sudan to Nigeria, um, yeah, I could do that now via Kenya Airways. Thankfully, I can go to, but but when John Garang was alive, it was actually more difficult for me to get to another African country than it was to go to Europe. So even down yeah. to aviation, it was, it was difficult for us to connect. Trade nice. has always been difficult. So uh, Dr. John Garang, who unfortunately passed away, one of his biggest dreams was not only to turn Sudan into Africa's breadbasket due to the amount of fertile land we have, one million square miles and whatnot, um, yeah. but he also wanted to tackle aviation on the continent. And, and from a creative slash cultural fashion, you know, entrepreneurship, visual expression standpoint, Um, that's where we come in, I feel strongly in that we need to work really hard on, on not just the visual aspects of the visual opportunities around this, but, um, like we were saying the, the, the connectivity, the, this, this conversation we're having now is an example of the opportunity for us to connect further, to encourage hopefully other industries to pay attention and to understand that we must work together. And, and this was John Garang's dream before he died. He really wanted us to connect further um, via trade and via transport and via aviation. And, and... Oh, Zane, go on. Can you guys? Oh, hi. Yeah, we can hear can you, you Zane. I can't yeah, hear we you. Can, hear you. can you guys hear me? Oh, yes, we can hear you. Are you there? No, I think. Not sure what's happened. Just keep going. I'll jump in. Oh, no, no, oh, okay. I was waiting. Okay. There's no social distancing happening here. I'm moving. Oh, oh wow. Okay. Good news. Good okay. Move. Well, that was, that was, anyway, that was kind of my point to that in the sense that, um, you know, interconnectivity, intra Africa is something yeah. that I feel we can all um, 
build on in terms of establishing what it even means to be African. These are all explorative, beautiful, yeah. potentially visual, visually, creatively. You know, the, the, this is a, an avenue that I think we, particularly as within the creative, cultural, entrepreneurship space, can can really start exploring. And I feel that it would affect other industries to pay attention. Hopefully, in the future, when we can visit each other. Yeah, me. I have a question for you because um, what are your thoughts on Lagos Fashion Week? Like, what what are you what are you thinking about that? Mm. Oh, okay. Um, well, ooh, Leah just put me on the spot, but okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I'm just thinking. I'm just thinking about you know, the yeah. gatherings and the people and all that. Of and, course, yeah. It's a, it's a very it's a very valid thought. But um, I think for us, fundamentally, we've always seen Lagos Fashion Week as not really, and it's more than an event. It's more of a platform than an event, right? And mm. um, which starts with activities and engagement since the start of the year, which we've done till now. Um, our season one activation, though, had to move from, can you guys hear me? Hello? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so our season one activation was meant to be a physical event, but we had to move everything online. So we organized like series of talks. We had, um, you know, in fact, we had like three different scenarios. It was meant to be an, a walk, uh, uh, an exhibition, like live exhibition where people would come and see the work of designers. And then we had to, you know, come up with a plan B, which was to try to shoot all the loops and collections and then release a series of films. And then the lockdown happened and we couldn't bring everybody together to do a shoot or any sort of digital 3D, 3D-esque uh, plan that we had. So eventually we settled for everyone sending in voice notes from, from their homes and different, you know, uh, different parts of Nigeria and some people in Ghana as well to create like a series of digital films, which we eventually presented on our Instagram, I think Twitter and YouTube as well. And so mm -hmm. moving on from here and trying to think or think or imagine what October would be like, you know, definitely we're in the same place. So we're mindful, very mindful that things are not going to be the same. I mean, gather, people gathering, even if people can gather, people will not be comfortable, might not be comfortable. Yeah. You know, it's never going to be business as usual with over 2,000 or 3,000 yeah. people trying right. to get into the space. And we're prepared for that. But the beauty in that is there's going to be more intimacy. It's going to be more about the brand. It's going to be, you know, more about, um, you know, the work they're trying to do. And we're increasingly trying to get our community together to be a bit more mindful about that. And that's what we've always pushed and advocated for anyway on our platform that fashion yeah. is not, it's less about the glitz and glamour, of, you know, the runway, but more about the artisans, the craftsmanship. It's more about, you know, right. the community of people yeah. who put the work together. So in terms of how we're going to present this body of work, you know, when the time comes, it's something that's A, going to be, I mean, it's something that definitely has to speak to what's happening around us today, you know, but um, yeah. what we can what I find comforting about it is it's definitely going to be engaging. You know, it's not going to be just a show for show's sake. It's, go it's going to be yeah. something that we're trying to, you know, of course we targeted objectives, but beyond that, you know, um, brand building, um, community engagement, co-creation, and, you know, just a general, and I, I find it interesting that everywhere else in the world, it's our values, what we've always done that people are advocating for. They're talking about having you know, mixed mm. fashion seasons now. We've yeah. always had, Lagos Fashion Week has always had mixed shows of uh, men's wear and women's wear. People are, you know, platforms across the world are trying to say, oh, guess what? Let's stop. Instead of having two, six uh, runway shows a, a year, let's reduce it to two. We've always advocated for one. One big one yeah. and a smaller one that, you know, it's a bit more intimate. So for us, it's quite interesting that what everyone else, and I guess that's the, that's the advantage of being small and little, you know, yeah. you know, because everything that's being advocated, I mean, think about rewiring.org and what, you know, their manifesto from yesterday. By the way, I was on that manifesto. <laughs> Oh, it was, I yeah. missed it. What is it? I missed this. What was this? I was I was on the um on the group yes. uh, who, who came up with the uh, at least who helped discuss and you know crank out and work out the the manifest the rewiring fashion manifesto uh, with business. Yes. Oh. No, it's really good. I hope I, I found it. 
Yes. I, I found it quite interesting because I thought, wow, you know, it's like we started out and we're like, how do we create and present fashion, you know? And we opted, we looked to what's happening beyond us to try to craft something that would work uniquely for the continent, right? And it's interesting that what you guys, the face you're in now, is you're crafting things that's beginning to look similar to how we are today. That's our reality. And that's all we need because- You know, what's interesting is like, I think in a way, I'm, uh, it's amazing that you guys have done this this whole time. And you saw, I yeah. love that you saw something and then you said, okay, there's problems here. I'm going to fix them for myself. And you fixed it for you, which makes total sense, mm -hmm. of course. And then now, the, you know, on this side, everybody's trying to fix it because we've, they've been doing this for the last 50 years. You know, once you start doing something in a certain way, unless something drastic like this happens, you don't re-question it. You don't try to fix it. You just think, okay, it's set in stone. But in yes. a way, Africa has that opportunity. And, and by the way, it's, we've seen it, I think, in a lot of things like even, um, you know, even in technology, how Africans are using technology much faster, much quicker, and you know, telephone much banking, better. all those things where you kind of like yes. jump all the steps that the, you know, for example, the West is doing. So you take the best of what the West is doing, but then you adapt Adapting. it better. It to, to, yeah, yeah. That, that's reality. amazing. Yeah, you know, so yeah. that that so where but that doesn't mean we don't have our problems. We yes, have our other. problems. I know, of course. We need to create yes. the market. You know, we need to find the market. We need to find funding. We need to find infrastructure. You guys have yes. all of that figured out. You know, so we've had to well, work around. No, I, apparently not. <laughs> well, not oh, no. exactly. <laughs> but that's why they're rewiring. That's why they're rewiring passion. So, no. so you know, we realized that our strength, like last There's week, you know, we realized that we have to come together with platforms like ours, you know, come together to come up with something that's going to work and more, I don't want to use the word, that's more feasible long-term that would grow, actually grow businesses because we need to see them grow. There's no point having like, you know, multiple fashion events or activities on the continent yeah. where everyone is flying all these, you know, there's so much happening. And then the creative people mm. who are supposed to be benefiting from it we can't really see it it's not tangible yeah. like what exactly are they doing you know so so yeah. for us it's um and that's where we've always been different like you know let's stop a minute you know what exactly do we need to be focusing on right now you know that uh, yes and, we need. and 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 also yemi i mean just to sort of add a couple of points of perspective from my point of view here not being so immersed in the fashion industry myself uh you know, I think the online experiences are obviously where to go, but there's a lot of noise in the online space and limited signal, right? So I would ask, yeah. how is Lagos Fashion Week going to do something that will interest someone like me who's really not that engaged? Like, how, like, what, like how would I, uh, what, what would be the different experience I would have online I versus the like hundred other Zoom I have, calls I, I have? I have an idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's your idea? Ooh, what's your idea? Like <laughs> <laughs> hey. As we were speaking, I, I, an idea is throwing in my head. And just thinking about you, Yemi, too, it's just about this whole Lagos Fashion Week situation. Um, first of all, question for you is um, how, like, on, the, on fashion, for how many designers actually are showing usually? Oof, usually about 40 to 50, but we need to cut That's that down by half. Yeah. Yeah. And how many of them are locals? I mean, I'm oh, saying Nigerians. So probably like 90% are locals, 90. We've always kept it that way. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. What's so, and um, even now, the conversations with other Fashion Week platforms is to encourage people to to show within their platform, considering travel now is probably going to be a bit more, travel is not going to be what it was before where we all got on planes and you know you, you can take a trip for a day or two and you do mm. what you need to do, in four hours you're, you're out of there. So it might make mm. more sense to show or, well, I don't want to use the word show, to present separate, to, sep to present in different places and then have a common, um, a common either showroom or something where yeah. we present their work to the right audience digitally. And to answer Zane's question, I think, you know, the, it's, it's all about the experience economy, right? Um, I think the brands and designers more than ever before have to 
they have to be the ones doing all that engagement. They have to convert using, you know, either through their, because think about it, everyone can self-publish these days, you know? So it's all about, if you can get on your own Instagram, your own Twitter or wherever to tell us about the yeah. brand, then they will be able to connect with you and interact with you in real time, as opposed to previously where, oh, you know, you have to wait for a physical experience, you come to the show, but even then you're not directly, uh, directly engaging with the brand. So a lot of yeah. brand engagements will be happening directly between the consumers and the brands. And then you have yeah. platforms who are pretty much just trying to handhold you through the process. Uh, but the handholding process might not necessarily be the engagement between the brand and the consumer, but more like how do you access opportunities that can help, you know, take your business from where it is today to the next level. And that's where mm, platforms yeah. like, like ours but, will have a role to play. So, I mean, uh, so the idea, I, the idea that I was thinking about actually, well, obviously it would be something I would ideally should be more it's I get that you're doing 90% Nigerians but obviously you, you have to do more th less than that <laughs> <laughs> why so many like that I have to be a little bit more diverse Not than that <laughs> well, <I can't> <laughs> go for the, uh, the um, Niger, no, but, Niger, Niger priority <laughs> I'm just saying um, but no, but, but but because I'm saying this because it's also it also goes in, in the same direction of you know intercon again you know That's creating true. a platform that brings us all together Everybody and makes together. us all interested yeah. in for example you know Zane said what is why am I going to be interested in looking at Lagos Fashion Week you're going to be interested in looking at like for example right Lagos Fashion Week mm. because maybe there's this really cool Kenyan designer that's also showing at the same time. And mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And there's like, and there's a Nigerian one yeah. and there's a Sudanese one, there's an Ethiopian one and there's a whatever, Ghanaian one and there are all these kind of different uh, designers. Mm -hmm. But I think maybe what could be interesting today because we have this problem of, you know, not having a live event, et cetera, doing something digital would be interesting, but let's say, and I don't know what the, 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 the reasonable number is, but like, let's say you have, 20, maybe 20 is too much, but like maybe 10, I don't know. But like tw if you had 20, you pick 20 people and they're all from different parts of the, of the, of the continent, like all designers, blah, 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 blah. And then ideally what you do is you sort of do like, um, like a, not a reality show, but kind of a, a show where you see the whole process of their, of their, of their, of how they make it, of how they're making a collection. So you have a, you know, so you don't have no, none of us have to travel there. You know, but maybe locally Impressive. everyone has to be, you know, followed and that you film their whole process. So you get to know these people, how they mm -hmm. work, what they're creating, etc. So they, everyone does that. And then in the end, it all comes together. And maybe there is a small intimate event where you're doing a live show of these people who've come together, who show you the things, they show the collection, you maybe judge it or not, you know, we do something like that. And maybe all four of us are doing this together. I don't know. It could be cute. Why not? Um, and then... It does does, and sorry, then, does, La and does then, Lagos Fashion Week have to be about showing fashion? Like, do we have to show fashion? Is that what fashion is? Yes, we're all fashion like, Yes, fashion. yes. It's yes. It's going to be something else. Today. <laughs> it's all about else. fashion. <laughs> Where are we going? 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 Where are we that um, along the lines of what are the most successful online things that I've seen, right? So Global Citizen or these like global events or, or you know, where everybody can somehow engage or everybody yeah. can somehow be entertained. So if you're going to limit 20 designers, right? And I'm sitting at home waiting to be your audience, even if it's a Kenyan designer, like I don't, I don't think I'm going to care enough to come to listen to a Kenyan designer, to be completely but it's a human, honest. But you're gonna, however, no, you're going to be interested however, because... He's a, you're following him I'll as come, a human. It's a human story. I'll probably, you know what I mean? I'll probably yeah, I'll sorry, probably yeah. because Yemi will force me, but no. Um, <laughs> but I think, but why not open it out to everybody? Because like, what if I want to know what's going on across the continent in fashion, right? Why can't I come to your sessions and actually you're running, you know, training lectures or something like that? So it's not just, the, it's the fact, the core is the fashion, but you have the opportunity to, uh, say hey, every, hey, hey, continents of Africa or wherever. Please send in your thirty-second videos on, you know, how you're doing fashion at home, or what are your designs. And we're going to get a top designer to look at your designs, or you know, or or I who knows nothing about fashion would love to know how do you cut and choose fabric and what's the show and 
you know, I can come and learn. And I don't want to say webinar. That's, that's webinar a very overdone. different thing than a, than a how to follow how to follow a Lego session format. You know, but, I mean? but, uh, but does she yeah, have to an, stick to her format? Adult. Like, why? Like, why, an, why do we'll I let Yemi, be an adult? We'll let Yemi speak. <laughs> <laughs> but that would be that would be an add-on, you know, to get to get people to get people sort of yeah connected. It's an add-on. Feel yeah. like yeah, it would be it would be really great. But um. I mean, Ooh. last with the last session we had, we had like different talks on different things from, you know, how to crochet, how to make a mask from crochet, just to, uh, from our woven threads um, activation, which we just finished, how to make a mask from crochet. So we had a few how to do things. We had a few designers show us there because obviously we're all stuck at home in quarantine. We had a few designers take us through their showroom yeah. in, um, you know, just shooting a, a clip. It, it was even done on their phones, Leah. You know, some of them did it, shot it on their phones and then sent it to us mm. and we plugged and played it. So, and it was quite interactive and it was in collaboration with uh, mm -hmm. Fashion Open Studio and Fashion Revolution. So that's definitely very exciting um, mm. because it's something we've, we've, just, we've just done. We had a designer from Mali. We had a designer from, it's two or three from Ghana. And then I think about five from, sorry, Niger, about five or three <laughs> from, from from, Do you think this Nigeria. thing is a little biased? Is it me or is it a little biased? <laughs> slightly, slightly. <laughs> I don't notice any bias, 90%. <laughs> but um, but uh, what is the goal of the online fashion week? Yeah, I mean, it's because the there's goal? three East Africans in this talk. That's yeah. why. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> next time, next time I'm coming with my <laughs> crew. It's a little Western, <laughs> Western vibe here. Yeah. You're outnumbered, yeah. Yemi, for the first time. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. I mean, talking about gold, for me, it has to be creative and commercial, you know, commercial yes. in the sense that the creative people need to get paid and not just the creative people, everyone involved within the process, you know, the people, yeah. the process, where they're sourcing from. The but, then, but then for me, like, if you did some, this kind of a format, for example, I think then you can make everything available to purchase. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like you're opening up. Yeah. The, what is uh, Zane to answer your question? The, the the goal of it is to educate people about what are the things that are actually can be made locally that are beautiful that you can purchase right. yourself and help your own economy. You know what I mean? So yeah. suddenly you get this. Oh, so and so. If there is, for example, I don't know, maybe there is some kind of a competition where you know maybe there's like a winner at the end because you know it's amazing because you have to create some kind of excitement around it anyway. So maybe one person wins. But even though one person wins, all the others can still, will still be able to put, for example, their thing online, and then you purchase. So suddenly, you're the 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 what's happening is like the awareness will will completely shift. Like, hey, what's yeah. Yeah. You're following, for example, right. I can be following a Kenyan designer. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna see his life. I'm gonna see how he lives. I can be yeah. in Sudan and and actually see. Oh, this is how they do things. Oh, interesting. This is where they, he finds his yeah. fabric. Oh, he, you know, it's. Okay, it's fashion, but you're also like getting into the lives of all yeah. these people. And yeah. at the same yeah. time, you're appreciating the craft, you're supporting yeah. the craft, you're supporting the, you know, the business. I don't know. I think there's a nice no, I like that virtual. idea. Yeah. That's no, a nice it's, idea. It's, it's, um, um, it's very yeah. I'm gonna send you I'm gonna send you ladies some of the clips from Woven Thread. I'll share, I'll put it in the so you see. It's really quite similar to to um, what you're talking about, at least what we try to do with that. And um, it is the future. I think it, for me, Leah, it's really the future. It can no longer just be, oh, yeah. everyone is secluded in their ateliers. You're making all these beautiful things. And then one day, yeah. a day and a time, and then you show it and everybody's stressed out. And then you wait for another six months before, at least in your world, you know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. we've always said to people, you have to tell us your story. You know, it's, it, it's been more That's difficult it. for us to even try to, create some sort of presence for brands that we work with without them storytelling. You know, this week, mm. uh, Sarah Dew from Tomboro yeah. Studio, you know, launched yeah. a video made in Africa where she's just telling her story. You have to tell the story. People want to, we need yeah. to know more. And I've been preaching about this for the last, I, I don't know, I, I don't even know how long, for too long, for us yes. not to sort of, you know, move forward with an idea like this that, you know, and that was why Woven Thread was so important to us, like, guys, let us show people just a little bit, you know, of the, about the craftsmen. Let's show a little bit about you, what you're doing. What does your studio look like? You know, we don't see yeah. all of these things. Yeah, and we all hide nice. behind our Instagrams and, you know, come up with this. But maybe some, some young designer had to struggle to 
to even power the generators to be able to produce a collection you don't know that and then Wonderful. you receive yeah. i um, so um ladies i have both an observation and a question to all three of you um the first is the, the observation is based on everything we've been talking about and that is ba ba basically the, the cultivation of identity um, um and story uh behind the cloth or behind the, 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 the garment. Um, about six, seven years ago, um, see a lot, of, a lot of the challenges we face, I think as, as a cultivating, burgeoning fashion industry in, in Africa, it's very similar in the Arab world. And Sudan sits in this really interesting cross section of both regions. Like, you know, as, as much as we are African, we are also, you know, embedded in, in Arabian culture, we speak Arabic, and, uh, uh, and, uh, and an example actually of that is Omar Asim, who's a designer from here, who's just recently won an award um, through Fashion Trust Arabia, which is based in Qatar. And actually, Leia, um, a lot of what FTA are doing by way of story building around the talent and digitally, they're actually practicing and, and working towards that right now. So it's an interesting template to to look at um so omar asim is both african he's from sudan but he's won an award in arabia and yet the challenges faced in both regions are, are very similar but, but this leads to my question and it's a it's a bland question but i think it's something we really need to think about in this conversation and that is as african women from each country you guys all come from do you really really think that we as a African people who are very much about touching and hugging and human touch and getting together and everything is a gathering, everything. We live in each other's pockets. We know everything about everything. <laughs> is it possible for us to, so, to adopt this new norm quickly? And because I personally don't know if, if we can as a people, and that's also something I've been thinking about. I'll give you an example. Six years ago, I was mentoring um, a designer who was from Kenya and another designer from Saudi Arabia. And actually back then, we were discussing how the fashion calendar doesn't make any sense, right? For us, because we live in a part of the world where it's sunny constantly. So for example, autumn, winter, spring, summer, you know, is it necessary for us to follow the fashion calendar? Why not build our own? Also, what, because of limitations for women in Saudi Arabia who couldn't go out and things like that, there were ideas around doing digital fashion shows. This is five to six years ago. These were ideas that, that I was putting into my, 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 my realm of designers within the, both regions back then. So, so saying all of this and looking into the future and looking into our habits as Africans, are we are we going to adopt this new norm? Do you think can we adopt this new norm? That's that's the question I wanted to ask the three of you, in consideration of of what we're working on. I'm not sure we have a choice. I don't know. Valid. <laughs> valid. <laughs> Painfully <Sorry>. valid. <laughs> get yeah. It. Because it hasn't, we, here in Sudan, here in Sudan, it just hasn't been adopted as much as it should be. You know, it's Ramadan right now. It's impossible for people to eat on their own during Ramadan. So as Sudanese people, ha the, the gatherings have continued. Numbers are, you know, cases are, are spiraling still. It's very dangerous. It's very sad. But you're talking about, about habits that literally shape us like in again i can only speak for sudan right now because i'm here and that is we as a people rely on people that's our entertainment our entertainment our livelihood our daily functioning is each other we rely on each other for everything yeah, i think I, I think there's the economic piece too of, of course there's the cultural aspect and then economically yes. i mean like most people you know the majority 200 million people are uh, living in in low uh, or slum type areas on the continent. Exactly, so and the fact that they have to, to share that. I mean, they're not watching yeah. Netflix and they're flat, and you know, 
uh, like there, we there are. you go. Um, there you go. Binge watching Amazon, you know. So it's like, and then also because it's an informal sector and the economics dictate that you, you know, you're you have to work that day to eat. And what are you going to do? Put eight people in the house with that with no food? That's it. And, you know, yeah. So I think that the the culture and the economics play a part, but um, but but Leah's point about you know we have to adjust somehow, whether in ten yeah. years through curfews or um, you know fi- finding uh, finding other ways that work for us. But that, but it, it's it's a really explosive you know scenario of of, of economics of of culture of history of pandemic of plague. <laughs> this is a plague. You know, if you look yeah. at what happened during the bubonic plague, how people reacted in the Spanish influenza of 1918 to 1920, 1919, So, you know, people had their lives turned upside down for two years. And then there was a recovery period after that. And I think, you know, we adjust as well Wasn't as we can. Wasn't there a second wave as well, have. Zane? Wasn't there a second yeah, wave? In the, in, the in the Spanish, yes, yes. It was in the fall. Mm. So actually, mm. the Spanish killed 50 million people worldwide but the most yeah. brutal was it came in one wave early in the year and then it went down and then in the fall it came back and just you know that was devastating so it was actually Obliter- the fall obliterated of yes and 19 and early 1919 you know but i just think i i want to focus us uh you know we we know what the contexts are but i feel like we could find a way individually or together um, in everything that we do to find some kind of a hope, you know, Lagos Fashion Week and what everyone is doing, like, you know, we, we, we can still come together and connect in some way and do something that has meaning yes. and impact. And we give hope because, yeah, it's all bad, right? The numbers are bad. The <laughs> number of ventilators are bad. Like, everything's bad. The economics are yeah. bad. Everything is bad. I've got it. Like, I, okay. So you're going to put anything you put on for me now I need to feel uplifted a little bit. I need to feel like I learned something and I need to feel connected. And I don't want to do a hundred Zoom calls either. I don't know about you guys, you know, how tired. Yeah. I, I think it's like, someone put it this way. Like imagine going to a bar and your grandmother's there and your work friends are there and your family is there. And it's just one place that you keep going to. Uh, that's exhausting. Like you can't, you can't manage everybody in one place. So, so, Very it's true. Just, it's just, so anything that we do, I feel... Um, I ask myself, um, is that like, from what lens can I look through it? Like if I'm trying to impact people or I'm trying, I'm trying to operate in this new normal space, you know, like what, what is it that, what is it that, that, that can be uplifting or, or some kind of forward motion? So you're talking about rewiring fashion and, and describing that yeah. to me and I'm really interested in that, you know, I'm really curious to see how will you pull off Lagos fashion and now, you know now I'm in, now I'm engaged right like is it just like how will I get engaged with this is there an opportunity yeah. that we're missing you know is there where's the money you said the commercial word right a lot of the brands don't have money anymore so the yeah. sponsors may no longer be your sponsors and you might have to find foundation but where's the money I ask myself foundations have money they're giving money you know, uh, mm. uh, well, and then, then, like I, I had kind of, I have kind of volunteered you as the person who's going to go and find the money. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, I that. Yeah. He's good at it. He's good at it. I'm just saying. No, I think I like, we all I, I have. We, we, like you know, we all have our weird. our hats, yeah. right? You know, we all yeah. have our hats. We all have our hats, right? Yeah. We it's, all. It's have not my hat. That one. That one's on my hat. It's Zane, it's your hat. <laughs> yeah, That's I'll be happy. I'll happily wear that hat. I'll happily wear it. And we can brainstorm too. Mm-hmm. Like where, like, you know, like that people like putting money and talent behind causes, right? So, right. so, right. So if, if Lagos Fashion Week had some kind of a cause, you know, I would be like, all right. It has, you know, it has a cause. Right. Uh, the cause, the cause, it's, cause. it doesn't need more than actually supporting a local a uh, talent. Is there a supporting COVID local design? Because the money huh? is a COVID no, it's money. Supporting, it's supporting local. It's supporting local talent of the continent. That's the whole point of. That's the cause. It's about. But, it's about. It's about changing, changing the economy. You know, connecting the, the all Africans together and creating a new, a new, yeah. a new space I mean, where we all gather to exchange. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, but I mean, but I, I mean, in this this context, right? So, so now we are as coronavirus foundations are giving money for for example raising awareness right 
or foundations care about women and girls. Yeah. You know, uh, but it's, you know, it's like, like a small, you can almost look at it as messaging. small businesses, maybe. You know, you yeah. can look at it as like, you know, micro, micro SMEs. Yeah. The ones, yeah. The ones okay. really and that's where I would the tap. Honestly, then that's where I would um, tap. But, but frame it like, you know, I'm just thinking about the commercial piece here, Yemi. Yeah. <laughs> since you guys but are then, but then, but then, then, but then if you if we do this no but if we do this and then we obviously you'd sell it to a netflix or something like this as well you know i think there's also that aspect of it you know you know what i'm saying like yeah. you'll have yeah. it yeah why not like yes. it could be on netflix Actually, and it'll be not? like wow yeah. cool show Actually, yeah you know that's great um, that's a great idea Demi, I have your yeah. whole thing figured out. Writing this down. Are you writing this down somewhere? You need to send it to us an action item. I think, um, I don't know. I think I, I, if we put our heads together, we'll, we'll come up with great stuff. You know, and I'm always yeah, inspired sure. by you guys. And I've been needing inspiration. I've been really feeling, uh, you know, like you up and down and down and down and down here <laughs> yeah so i was there quite excited go. just to hang out and chat right and, yeah. and um, uh, be like okay i wonder what they're yeah. up to you know and then uh, and then just to realize that you're no one is alone we're all um trying to you know figure this out you know and um yeah 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 how best to survive but, um, but then, you know it's so nice also to see like Four women coming from four different places and just super yes. connecting and enjoying each other's company and laughing and sharing and I don't yeah. know there's mm. something so special about that um there really is know, you know it's yeah. uplifting yeah. it lifts yeah. it really yeah. uplifts yeah mm. it, it, it makes it us really feel is. like we're together <laughs> it is it is it's here yeah. but I have one question how come Yemi looks so good in the middle of a pandemic Girl, <laughs> I, I mean, that's that is my birthday, you guys. I have, I have to confess. You know, my birthday was two days ago. Oh, and I was birthday. Like, oh, birthday. We have I was sitting like, birthday. oh my god, happy how birthday. do you, you know, how do you have a birthday in the middle of a pandemic and all? And then I just thought, you, know <laughs> you, you do so your yesterday, hair. <laughs> so yesterday I felt better. Like I'm like, hmm, you're actually feeling better one day post your birthday, and then today mm. I'm like, I'm actually feeling much better. Let me just, you know appreciate it you know just be like hmm, you know put some, ah, powder, good. Put some lipstick and just <laughs> i'm here i'm alive and you know honestly it's um it's it's nowadays you know it's just like just taking that one thing that you're grateful yeah. for and i'm holding on to it that yes it might have been in the middle yeah. of the pandemic and things are not perfect and i want so much more but i don't have that but i have life and i have you know surrounded yeah. by family and surrounded Amen. by you know. so yeah so i am um, that's mm -hmm. that's my head space tonight mm -hmm. <laughs> quarantine say. birthdays are not the one i had two just now it wasn't it wasn't okay but I like know, you right? said holding on holding on to what we do have and that is each other and um and life i guess so tough times but i feel we will get through oh i can hear a baby in the background is that using oh i'm so sorry yeah why well, i forgot to mention <laughs> since i last saw you i had a child <laughs> <laughs> no there's just like i guess it's friday at the park and yeah wow, that looks so good so I even I me, I'll just come out now. I've had it. Isn't it funny? Isn't it funny how outside has become a luxury? Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. It really is. It's like you start to appreciate. Like I'm hearing the birds sing. I'm looking at wow. There's so many different shades of green. Wow, I never noticed that. So I think mm. it's coming back to what we talked about earlier. It's just the, the slowing down and appreciating uh, the environment and people. You know. And yeah. It's like I'm not. I don't have a purpose sometimes if I call someone I'm like I'm not I'm just yeah. saying hi like that's it I'm hugging just by the way I, I'm hugging it. each of you for 10 minutes each I just want to be clear on that like I am going to make it weird I'm hugging you all for 10 minutes each month, when we see yeah. each other 10 minute hugs so I'm just saying <laughs> what? yeah we love that 10 minute hugs for each of you because yeah. I miss I miss human touch so much so yeah. so much. So well, yeah, I feel the same so, way. Okay. So amazing um, listening to you ladies and talking and um, 
I don't mm-hmm. know. We'll, well, I guess we'll continue the conversation offline and offline, um, oh, not live. <laughs> yes. Not live. Oh my God, I forgot we were live. Chewing <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> no, Zane, thank you, not. thank you for the, thank you for setting um, this up. Bringing us together, I think we can get again, again what, as always. Um, what uh, resonated is yes, uh, the story remains the same, but um, mm. with the new normal and the reality of what's around us, you know, there's a need to go beyond the story to explore. I guess to explore what's next and how we can all contribute yes. within our own our own different you know, what we do on the daily to strengthening what the story is and to making sure that we not only impact our lives, but the lives of everyone else who's connected to what we're trying to do. And um, oof, here's to, here's to a, a new normal that hopefully we can all adjust to. And um, I, I don't know, you know, I'm with, I'm, I'm with uh, Roseanne on that, that how are we really going to you know, get used to that. You know, it, it's it's harsh. It's a harsh reality, but it's, it's going to take a lot of getting used to because we're people, people, you know, we thrive on connections. On, on Yes. The, yeah. Yeah. So, but um, the one thing though that's not going to change is who we are on the inside, you know, our values, our principles, and I guess uh, uh, that joint vision of what the of what the future should look like, you know, that uh, we all hope to More see. interconnection for sure. Yeah, yeah. So, mm, um, particularly in Africa, we must keep that going, I feel. We need I, each other I, I more wonder, than ever now. I wonder how that's going to look post COVID with the ACFA agreement going on, you know, that's, I guess that's a conversation for, a, for another day, the mm. Intra-Africa Trade Agreement. Yes. Uh, you know, but um, yeah, it's um, it's what's next. Interconnectivity and lots of conversations like this. You know, to keep us, mm-hmm. yeah, keep keep everyone going and to strengthen, strengthen, strengthen the work that we do. And uh, yeah. so, Ralph, will Ralph be going online, Dane? Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I've been, I've been thinking the same thing. Just do, you know, is there a way to do it online? Um, the magic mm. is in the location and the in-person chemistry. Uh, yeah. So yeah. I think, and, 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 and for now, I think this year, I'll, I'll just pause for a moment and just try and understand uh, how things unfold around me and, and how, how we could grow and develop Rouse also. Uh, so it's not, it's not, it's not um, in the works for this year, because I myself, I'm mm. so overwhelmed just trying to figure out like what, what, what do I do? And my, you know, my parents are in Nairobi with some health yeah. stuff, and so I'm just, I'm just trying to understand um, where is the, where can the content, uh, where can the, 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 uh, the expertise that we all have together be focused in a way that plays into what we need right now. Um, you know, for, so for example, across the continent, the prior one of the priorities has been for that for each government and the AU and the CDC Africa. How do we communicate prevention, right, throughout the continent? So mm. how do we do? How do we do mythbusters? You know, we have lots of our own. How do we? How do we do local language? How do we use musicians, entertainers, etc., uh, to communicate messages in towns and villages, etc. You know, that sort of thing. Um, so my attention mm-hmm. is focused on that. So insofar as the, the Rouse women uh, go, they're are, they're my you know they're my they're my team and my, my my sisters. And so we we're we're brainstorming. But in terms of another event, either online or offline, I don't not this year, but most likely. Yeah. There's a lot of work to just do one. <laughs> I realize how much yeah. work it is. Oh my god, I never knew yeah. actually. Um, so I think, um, I think my, yeah, that's sort of my focus is how, how do we bring this firepower in terms of education and prevention for health? Yeah. Mm. Okay. I'm tying that to magic, Roseanne. So how do you think, mm. you know, what, what will be the next steps for magic and amplifying the voice, uh, the amplifying what you do, you know, because that's really yeah. quite crucial. Sure. We, we, we really um, don't know. For now, um, we are like like Zane was mentioning earlier, looking at putting together some kind of e-learning uh, program. But but um, it was very experiential. 
The whole idea behind the magic drive is to connect physically with young people um, and, you know, conduct these fashion related exercises that boost confidence, that um, that bring appreciation or new realization around the beauty of not just themselves, but their immediate vicinity. So everything is personal. Everything is very physical. Um, you know, they need to stand with the photographers. They need to sit with the stylists. We need to work with them when it comes to the clothing. So it's it's really tough. Um, I, I'm thinking of, of ideas. I put, I've jotted some thoughts down, but it's it's really hard to navigate, to be honest, because and, and, and on a very personal level, honestly, I don't want to get rid of the physical aspect of the magic drive. I don't want to. I hope that we, you know, reach a point where we can mingle together again. I mean, the idea of us having to do more online is so um, disturbing, to be honest, to me. It disturbs me because uh, I... I love, I thrive being around people, you know, and what, what Zayn was saying earlier, like the, the power of, of, of amalgamating great women through Rouse is, is that physical connection. The, okay. I, I, didn't, I didn't make that year, but I know uh, Zayn, a lot of my sisters were there and they all told me that you guys were crying together and that you built together and that you hugged each other. And I don't want to lose that, to be honest. No. So I don't want to lose that. And I think fashion also, the beauty of us, the, what I love most about working in the fashion industry is that connection. When you and all of us met at BOF Voices, you know, Fashion Week, I don't really go to Fashion Week that much anymore, but what I love about Fashion Week is connecting with my friends. So I I hope that we don't lose this. I really do. Um, but uh, the Magic Drive is going to move forward. We now have a space in Mombasa. Um, and, uh, and we will move forward. If we do have to go mm -hmm. online for a while, we will. We will look at avenues. But I, there's nothing more important, I think, to confidence building than being with that individual and looking them in the eye and really tapping into their magic in a physical way. So um, let's see, it's, it's hard. You know, a lot of my work also is focused around strategic mission, strategic dialogue, build, conversation, development. And this, this involves people. So mm -hmm. I, I, I hope that we can work towards being together again because I cannot do without. <laughs> Definitely. And because um, when I think about, when I think about Lem Lem Lea, I'm quite keen and interest, you know, to, to interested to find out, you know, with sort of the women who do the weaving, like it's a process that I think they enjoy doing together. Um, do you think restrictions will prevent that happening moving on? You know, that whole communal process of creating you know that brings so much beauty and lends so much you know um are they meant to do all of that in isolation i, I don't know what what are the rules you know i, I it's um I, I, but i yeah, guess the, rule, if the I rules honestly are, do not, i honestly do not know because i don't know exactly what the rules are going to be necessarily going forward um i i we're, we're really just like gonna take take it one day at a time and kind of deal yeah. with whatever we, we were given I don't know I mean it's very complicated to be you know not not out of business for two months you know yeah, and then having to pick up again etc and it's a tricky so I, I have no idea I really don't know I don't have the answer right now yeah, yeah. um tough yeah tough, yeah, yeah, um, tough um, but, um, but um I guess we do what we can right and you move yeah, forward. Yeah, will. Definitely. Yeah. So yeah. sorry to, to leave things on that note where we're all like pondering, going away with wow. <laughs> so what's next? I'm going I'm going away with Lagos Fashion Week 2.0. So I'm yes. Kind of smiling. <laughs> Same. Yes. So, Me too. <laughs> so that's cool. I'm uh, excited about that and I look forward to all those conversations. So bugging you coming up in in well we'll give you time to relax and you know get over this intensive one hour one hour i guess one hour 10 minute session and yes. then we'll, we'll recalibrate yeah have yes. a lovely lovely weekend thank ladies you. so it's nice really to see you guys so, so nice. good to see you guys really, really so great. nice bye. Bye. Big kiss. So nice. bye guys
Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Take care.